I am here with Raymond Gourlay, and we are going to be doing a God at Work interview. We haven't done one in a while, and I'm really excited. These are really important to us here as the pastoral team, and they, we do them for a couple of reasons, but here are the two most important reasons. We do them, first of all, to introduce people in the congregation, just to give you a glimpse into their life and their story what's different about them, what's similar about them, what makes them tick. And our goal, honestly, is that everyone eventually who is willing would be interviewed um, in a God at Work interview over the years. The second reason we do it is that Joseph and I say over and over again from the pulpit that what we do during the week is just as important as what we do on Sundays. But there is no better way to bring that to life than to hear what someone does during the week, and to hear from them, to pray for them, and be inspired by them um, about what their work is. So, I want to in- introduce Raymond Gourlay, who is comparatively new to our church, and I'm going to ask him a few questions about himself, so be listening. Raymond, so, so, so to start, tell us a little bit about yourself, your family, and you're new to the area. Where have you come from? Awesome. We came from Parksville, so I got a lovely wife, Rebecca. She is eight and a half months pregnant and a son, Kieran, two and a half. He's the, been running around here at the back and screaming and whatnot, so um, he's adorable. And uh, we just moved from Nanaimo, and um, my wife is from Ladysmith. I'm actually from Parksville, so this is kind of returning back to my childhood home for me, uh, which feels really fun. Um, and we've been here, yeah, since June. It's been awesome to, to be back in the community and to get involved here at Oceanside. Right, so tell us a little bit about, it's always great to hear how you found Jesus, how Jesus found you. Well, there was this bus driver named Diane. <laughs> no, I, I did have her, and of course Everyone knows <laughs> Diane. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I had the blessing of being born to parents who were Christians, and, and uh, they were actually uh, missionaries and aid workers when I was a little kid, and, and um, so they raised my brothers and I uh, to know about Jesus, and so I accepted Jesus at a very young age and um, was able to be discipled in, in Sunday school programs and youth ministries here in Parksville. So um, yeah, just had some really good provision early on in life, and uh, um, Jesus became, uh, gave my heart to him at a young age. And continue to get to know him over the course of my life. So I've been really thankful for that. So tell us a little bit about your work. What do you spend most of your time doing it? Feel free to describe it for us. Yeah, it's, that's something I, th- I think about a lot because uh, I just changed. I just changed jobs. So I, uh, up until recently, was working um, at a church in Ladysmith doing vocational ministry at various levels of full time and part time. Uh, wonderful, beautiful church, and. Um, and now I am full-time cheese all the time. So I work in a family business called Little Qualcomm Cheese Works. If you know anything about family businesses or if you've worked in one, you know that you basically do everything. So um, the main areas uh, that I'm responsible for are the sales and the marketing and tourism, farmers markets. And then I'm just actually making cheese um, most days a week now as well. So I love doing that. It's a big shift from the, the world of church ministry. Uh, but there's tons of overlap. And I especially love cheese. And I... I <laughs> Let me, I'm going to frame it up a little differently. I, um, what I, what I, I've been thinking a lot about God in work, so I was stoked to be able to talk about this because um, there's kind of two levels in which God is always w- uh, with us in, as we work and, and, and two levels in which we honor him in our work. One is with the people that we work with. Um, so I went from working with all Christians in a church environment to working with some Christians and some non-Christians. And the biggest lesson that I've learned there overall is if you're not weird and awkward about your faith, no one feels weird and awkward about your faith. You know what I mean? If, if you're not, if, if it's something that you're comfortable talking about because it's a huge part of my life, um, other people respect that. And, and we've been able to, I've been able to have really excellent conversations with some coworkers um, who are not Christians and, and to just talk about things in a, in a healthy way casual way. Um, And then being able to talk about faith with other Christians at work is a real blessing too, and to be able to encourage one another in our faith and discuss issues because we have a lot of different traditions and denominations represented in our company, which is awesome. Um, And then there's the other level of honoring God with the actual work. And the Bible is clear that no matter what we're doing, we're doing it for the glory of God. And so we pursue excellence and we pursue when we give it our best, um, even if it's, even if you work with no one. Um, just the actual work is an act of worship. 
So I, I try and keep that in mind, uh, and I especially love it because we're making food. And the Bible talks tons about food. It talks about um, God providing food. It talks about us sharing food. It talks about the meal. It talks about sharing, you know, a community that's built around a meal. When Jesus chose something to commemorate his body and blood, he chose food. So um, I love that. And I love that the food that we produce isn't just a staple like maybe flour or oil that goes into everything. It's, it's something that people buy on special occasions and they use it to share with friends and family. They use it to gather around. So um, I literally pray for our cheese as I'm making it because it's not just nourishing people. It's building community and it's going to draw people together. So I love that. And then there's this other element um, around agriculture and, and stewarding the land. And, and something that we talk about on every tour that we do is, is uh, we've been given 90 acres of, of farmland on Vancouver Island. That's a, lot, that's a lot of habitat. And it's not just habitat for farm animals, but also wild animals, also farm crops and wild plants. And people, there's four generations of people who live, uh, of one family who live on the farm. My, my parents, my son, my brothers, we're all, it's a giant family commune. Uh, and then we have guests and visitors on the farm every single day. And it's a joy to be able to share our farm publicly with that. So we, we always think and talk about how our farm is habitat for all of those different parties and how we can best steward that um, to enable every party to have what they need, not necessarily what they want, but to be able to have what they need from that property and to be able to steward that land in a God-honoring way. So um, I've learned that coming out of church ministry, where it's very obvious to see God working in your work, coming into food slash agriculture or any area, um, it's God's still at work and it's still obvious to see uh, what he's doing and how to honor him in that. That's incredible. Isn't it incredible to hear such a rich vision and theology of work from somebody so young? And we're thankful to have you here, Raymond. Now, Raymond, do you ever have fun at work? I avoid it at all costs, but sometimes we slip into it. <laughs> we found a video on the Little Qualcomm Cheese Works Facebook page that you might want to see. Go ahead and play that, Judy. <coughs> yeah. We're in here wrapping up oat le paneer And I'll drop a couple rhymes while I got your ear And everybody's talking about the cranberry grape And you know that it's good cause we go great great And oh yeah, I'm a cheese maker rapper I use the vacuum sealer but it's not the flow rapper And Paula, what? I heard you like it spicy So I made some cheese that turned out nicely Mmm yeah, we call it hot gels Made 18 wheels, it's about to get real It's a give you a thrill and oh! Can you give him a hand? Be careful what you put on the internet. Yeah, you're never putting anything on the internet again. So, sorry, on a more serious note, you can't go yet. Is there anything that you struggle with at work, or struggle with um, when you're seeing God at work, anything? How can we pray for you? Yeah, um, it's... Uh... It's a challenge to, to uh, often work together with people that you live with and to have boundaries within your family, to have family time and to have work time. So as, especially as we move on to the farm, and for my wife, this is a brand new industry um, and a brand new place and whatnot. So we're still figuring out how to create healthy parameters around our, our work and our family life and all of that. Um, and it's not just living on a farm, it's living on a farm where there's visitors and guests every single day uh, so one of those parameters I was talking about earlier, one of those different parties, is, is at open hours, right? We have, we have a certain time that's just for family and then time to invite everyone else in. So finding kind of our mix in that uh, is something that we're working on and praying about right now. So you can join us in praying for that. Um, and certainly uh, we need more cheesemakers. So we've got someone um, that we're training right now, but it, we're working really hard. And um, just energy and, and strength for my mother and I. We're the two cheesemakers um, as we, yeah, continue to try and meet demand and all of that. Uh, but God's blessed the business in a really real way, and we're very thankful that the, the community has supported us so much for the last 16 years. And, and um, it's, a, it's, yeah, a tremendous thing to be a part of. 